In this video, we will look at two simple eigenvalue algorithms. Why do we need eigenvalue algorithms? I assume you already know the fundamentals of modal analysis. Let us make a quick review. If you want to compute the natural modes or eigenforms of a structure with multiple degrees of freedom, you would need to solve this homogeneous expression. Here viscous damping is neglected. Inserting the harmonic solution into the homogeneous equation and on simplification, we obtain the following expression in terms of the stiffness matrix, the mass matrix, the eigenfrequencies and the eigenforms phi. The subscript i here denotes the various natural modes of the structure. If we write lambda as omega squared, we obtain the so-called generalized eigenvalue problem. Now, if we assume we have the solution for the eigenvector phi, then we can compute the eigenvalue using the Rayleigh quotient, shown on the right. The Rayleigh quotient is obtained by pre-multiplying the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the generalized eigenvalue problem with phi and solving for lambda. If the systems are small, that is, if k and m are small matrices, then we can convert the problem into a standard eigenvalue problem, that is, by taking the inverse of m and then solving the standard eigenvalue problem very easily using the characteristic polynomial, that is, computing the determinant and solving the polynomial. This method you would have studied in school. But in case of large systems, that is, for stiffness and mass matrix with millions of rows and columns, this is not feasible. We can solve such big systems using iterative methods. The drawback is that usually, when we use iterative methods, we can compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors only one at a time. However, as eigenvectors are orthogonal, we can use an orthogonalization procedure to compute all other eigenvectors and eigenvalues if necessary. In practice, in structural analysis, we are interested in the low frequency modes and for the sake of time integration, that is, when we are using explicit time integration methods, we are interested in the highest frequency. In the forward iteration scheme, we simply iterate recursively until convergence assuming lambda is equal to 1. This is similar to the fixed point method. Let x be an approximation of the eigenvector phi. First, we initially assume a certain eigenvector x0. This can be anything non-zero. Then we insert this value into this expression, mx is equal to kx, and solve for x1 using a linear solver. Then insert the solution on the right hand side and again repeat. To avoid any numerical underflow, we have to scale the solution. When we have an eigenvector, we can compute the eigenvalue using the Rayleigh quotient we discussed earlier. Here rho is an approximation of lambda. The eigenvalue can be used as a measure to stop the iteration, that is, when changes to rho between two iterations are less than one percentage, we could tell the computer to stop the iteration. The forward iteration gives us the largest eigenvalue. To compute the second largest eigenvalue, we need to choose an initial vector, that is x0, as something that is orthogonal to a previously computed eigenvector. Because now that our initial x0 is orthogonal to the first eigenvector, our algorithm should now converge to the second largest eigenvalue. To compute the smallest eigenvalue, we can simply switch k and m, which we saw in this forward iteration scheme. This gives us the inverse iteration scheme. The procedure is similar. To obtain the second smallest eigenvalue, we can similarly do an orthogonalization step and repeat the iteration procedure. Here is a detailed implementation of the method. Don't be overwhelmed by the new symbols y and y bar. These are just helper variables. 
Remember, we are using x instead of phi and rho instead of lambda in our algorithm as these are just approximations. So we assume an initial value x1, then we compute y1, then we can start our loop. As we have y1, we can compute x bar 2 using a linear solver. From x bar 2, we can compute y bar 2 using matrix multiplication. Now using the Rayleigh quotient, we can compute an approximation of the eigenvalue which we denote rho. We could also have used lambda to represent the eigenvalue, but we need to be theoretically consistent when dealing with approximations and real solutions. We can then do a scaling procedure that is normalization. After each loop, we compute the change in the eigenvalue. If the change is less than one percentage, we could stop. Once we have the eigenvalue, we can compute the eigenfrequency by taking the square root. As we have the eigenfrequency, we can compute the time period. The forward iteration gives us the lowest time period. To recap, the forward iteration gives us the largest eigenvalue, the highest frequency, and the lowest time period. The procedure for the inverse iteration is similar. The solution will be the smallest eigenvalue and the lowest frequency. As the frequency is small, the time period will be large. That is, will be the largest time period. So to recap, the inverse iteration gives us the smallest eigenvalue, the lowest frequency and the largest time period. A PDF of the algorithms is available in Moodle. In the exercises, you can practice the algorithms that we discussed here.